Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. So today I'm super thrilled to be bringing you the next installment of AI Community Asks. And here, the question that I am going to be addressing today is how to manage your time efficiently. I've been getting a lot of questions from my subscribers and well, I thought about it, I've attended a lot of seminars and a lot of lectures and I have followed a, a lot of guidelines myself to structure my, my day and the tasks that I do on a weekly basis in order to be more time efficient, more so after I had my son. So I thought I could actually share uh, the strategies that I use, especially in how to come up with your best strategies to to schedule and the second thing is how to come up with your time plan in order to be the best and most efficient version of yourself if this is of interest to you please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and also leave me a thought as to what other aspects do you think I can help you with to answer or to aid in your AI machine learning quest so let's get straight to it. All right, so let's get to our topic for the day, which is time management and it's a geek's guide. So how to make most effective use of the 24 hours a day and the seven day week that we have on a regular basis. The things to consider uh, for, for in order to come to the best solution for effective time management is that it is a two part problem instead of just being a one problem. The first part is building an effective strategy. That means it is the way in which we wire our brain to prioritize the, the, the tasks and in what order we should be doing so that we can keep up with all our tasks and responsibilities, but also save time for some me time as well, right? And the second part is to create a time plan. Often what I have seen that if let's say that you are able to prioritize it better, but if you don't have a time plan, you might exceed the, the amount of estimated time you think you have uh, stipulated for a particular task and again, fall short of delivering everything. So the, the guidelines that I wanted to start with is embedded in, in Stephen Covey's four quadrant rule for all of our tasks. And for those who don't know about Stephen, Stephen Covey, I will be uh, linking uh, his Wikipedia page and his, uh, his award-winning book, which is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in this particular book, he talks about how all of our tax, tasks can actually be divided into four quadrants. And that's the, the rule that I wanted to go with starting. So if you see all of our, our jobs and, and all of our, our tasks on a daily level and even on a weekly level, we can divide them into four quadrants. The first quadrant, as it says, is urgent and important. So things such as deadlines, you know, last minute crisis or, um, you know, something that you have to take care of right now. It's, it's running faucet, your water is, uh, you know, filling up your home or if there's a fire. So that's a crisis that, that is urgent and it is important for you, uh, not for others, but for you. So you need to, th these are time critical things essentially. So time and sensitive matters. Then quarter number two is where you think about your career, personal planning, long-term relationships, long-term projects, because these are things that are important to you, but not that urgent. So there's no ticking clock by your head that's telling you that, no, you need to do, right, do it right now. So there is no nervousness, there's no anxiety, but you have time to, to plan about it and you have time to build relationships and you have time to you know give to the long, long-term long project. So think of it if it's, it's dating, uh, where you are giving it time to, to build that relationship. Or if it is, you know, you're thinking about a next career move, what should you do? Should you seek out a mentor? Do you want a career coach? So these are decisions that you need to, and, and these are not things that you can do overnight. So that would be things that happen in quarter number two. Quarter number three is more things that are urgent. So they have a time sensitiveness to them, uh, but they're not important to you. They might be important to someone else. So for someone else, it might be their quadrant one, but for you, it's your quadrant three. What that means is, let's say if someone comes and says, hey, it's, uh, I, I need your help to do that. So that's a crisis situation, but it's actually not important for you, but you want to help out your friend. Uh, it, it, it would be socializing, it would be team activities, um, something that is, again, not very important to you, but it is definitely important in order to keep your friendship in order for your environment. So that's, more of, of quadrant three. And quarter number four is things that are not urgent 
and they are not important either. So here are very good examples would be binge watching television. Hmm, we've all been there, haven't we? <laughs> so one series after the other or taking, you know, uh, taking a break or you could just be, you know, on social media browsing hours and hours and hours. We've all been there, right? So that's how you can think of every single tasks that we do on uh, the, this 24 hour uh, period. We can actually categorize each and every one of them in these four quadrants. Now, in order to be most effective, you might even pause this video right here and write down and even if it's like the smallest of tasks. So think of it where you would place them. And I will show you examples of how I place my tasks by the end of the video. But this would just be a, a good way for you to think where did you did you place your your tasks when you started the video. And by the end of the video, do you still think you should be placing that those tasks in the same quadrant? Or should you change them? So the optimal goal right now, let, let's let's look at what are, you know, what do these four quadrants really signify? If you think quadrant one and three, this is where there's an urgency. So you need, it's a pressing matter. You need to get to it right away. And whenever there's a, you know, pressing matter or right away, there's a lot of adrenaline, there's a lot of cortisol. So, and, and that makes us anxious, that makes us hypersensitive, and that's actually not good for our body. Instead, if you think, um, of course, you, you don't really care about not important tasks, so then the only quadrant you really care about is quadrant number two, where you start and plan the things that are most important to you. So there's no anxiety, there's no hypertension, and you are calm and you are strategic about it. So the optimal goal is to have most of our tasks in quadrant two. Now that you've started listing out your tasks, start seeing do you have most of your tasks in quadrant two or maybe not? Now, let's look at what each and every one of these quadrants truly mean. Like we say, like we saw, quadrant one is more of, you know, urgency and it, but it's important. So that's the, the, the quadrant of crisis. Quadrant number two, where we strategically plan out tasks, that is the quadrant of leadership where sh we should be living our lives out of. And the third one is the quadrant of distraction. So, Clearly those tasks are not important to you, but you do them anyways. So in, in, in these cases, you know, it's distracting you from doing more tasks in quarter number two. So think of Q3 tasks as distractions. And quarter number four, well, that's just pure waste. And if you think that you are unable to keep up with the tasks in a, in a particular day, then probably you need to stop your tasks that you think are you, you're putting in, in quarter number four. So maybe less browsing on, on social media or maybe less TV. And uh, but then that does not mean, uh, you know, you, you don't take a break at all. Of course, you will not be able to function if you don't take a break. But maybe the breaks could be different. You know, walk, to taking a walk outside or, um, you know, uh, even sleeping is, 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 is great. But, you know, maybe think about what are the wasteful uh, tasks that you can actually skip out in a day. Now, uh, based off of the definitions of, of, of quadrants, we need to understand some of the actions that every single quadrants would, would mean so that you can plan your life effectively. We saw quadrant number one was crisis. And in, in crisis, the only thing you can do is to work it out. So you have to attend to them. It's clearly important to you. There's a time commitment, but you have to do it. So every tasks that you, that you put in, in quadrant one, you just have to do them. For quadrant number two, which is the leadership house, you can plan. So you have more time. That is where you build strategy. That is where you reach out to mentors. That is where you think, okay, I, let me make a, a month plan as to this is what I'm gonna do first, this is what I'm gonna do next. And this is where if you have a time plan, then it'll go hand in hand with this plan that you're making up. Distractions, quarter number three, well, the best you can do is delegate. So if you, if you think you have more pressing things to do, that is you have more quadrant two tasks piled up, well, you just ask, why don't you take someone else to go out with you right now? Or can you ask XYZ to help you with this particular task? I'm a little busy. So that's delegation. And you can do that. Most of the time, you know, we, we are aware we can do it, but we want to help our friends anyways. But if you have other pressing things, you might have to reconsider. And finally, quarter number four, it's pure waste. So try to eliminate it as much as possible. Now, 
how to modify the task prioritization. Uh, prioritization. So remember, I, I told you in the beginning, it's our brain, it, it's, it's wired in a particular way to build an optimal strategy. So whenever, you, it, by default, whenever we wake up, we say, you know, brush teeth, take a bath, eat food, socialize, visit social media. So these are, you know, pretty much some of the tasks that I do in a, in a day. And my brain tells me these are all important right equal weightage to each and every one of them so brushing teeth is as important as socializing and visiting social media because i do them every single day and in in my brain of course uh, that that can tell me that low priority tasks are responding to emails yeah yeah uh, you know I'll, I'll get to it term project which is due later if it's due in in two or th you know two two weeks or or a month well i'll get to it later whenever it's closer to the due date Call friends and family, eh, maybe I'll do it later. I don't have to do that right now. Exercise, yes, I should do it, but maybe I'll do it later. And the same thing if, if I have to, you know, cook, prepare healthy food, come up with a diet plan. Well, it's not that, it's not that important, right? That, that's how, the, the, uh, at least my brain, that's how it was wired to, to think. But now let's see if I start putting quadrants to them. So brushing teeth, taking a bath, eat food when I'm hungry, that's all quadrant one. Socializing, well, I think that's that's quadrant number three, right? For the state us for the stage of life that I'm in, socializing, yes, is, is definitely it's it's this it's a distraction. It takes away from what I'm doing otherwise. And visiting social media, well it's clearly quadrant number four. And on the other hand side for the low priority pile of tasks, responding to emails, they're either quadrant one or three, so I should get to them sooner than later in order for them to not you know, not get attended to, or I may miss out on information if I'm not uh, being attentive in these cases. Term project, which is due later, which is a classic case of quadrant two. So this is where you can plan it out. So I should get to work today rather than a week later when it will become a quadrant one task and there will be this ticking clock in my head at that time to finish it. So if I get to this long-term project or let's say I have a homework due in, in one week, if I start the day or maybe a, a day later after, I, after which the homework got assigned, I will have more time to, to plan it out. So it will be quadrant two rather than if I have a homework due tomorrow, then that becomes quadrant one. So you see the same task, the same assignment. It's just the way you, you strategize or you prioritize it. It could either be quadrant two or it could be quadrant one. Call families, call, you know, call, call friends and family. It, it is definitely quad, you know, quadrant two. And it's definitely important and it's, uh, it's not urgent, but it's, it's definitely very important to me. So it's quadrant two. Exercise, super important. And you know, there's no ticking clock there. So th that's definitely quadrant two. And you know, preparation of healthy food. So like I told you before, I, I tagged each and every uh, one of these tasks by default. I was doing all of the ones on the right, on the left hand side. And I was you know, trying to put away things on, on, on the right hand side. And finally, I was not getting enough time. But now that I have tagged them, what I'm understanding is quadrant one and three, I should do them anyways, right? And then I should be doing more of quadrant two right and i should be cutting out as much as i can off quadrant four and then i will be able to be the most efficient self so this is what i would like you to do at this point is list out all the tasks as they could be big or small and place them into the different quadrants and play caution that you want most of your tasks to be Q2 and you need to modify them like I showed you uh, by getting to tasks earlier so that they are not Q1, Q3, but more Q2. And now you will start seeing that now that you have built up the strategy, this is how you, you tag your, your tasks, that's your strategy. Now the biggest problem that you will start seeing at this point is, is the time plan, is coming up with an optimal time plan because what could happen is the amount of time you allocate to every single task, you might be overshooting or undershooting. If you overshoot, well, you'll not finish them. And if you undershoot, you might get into more of quadrant four activities, like a little more browsing or you know watching another, another series on, on Netflix or, or on the TV. And again, things go down after that. So now that we have a strategy, let's go into seeing what's the best way to come up with the time plan. This is just an example of how I have built my weekly tasks 
in and around. You see, uh, the most of the tasks are in are in Q2, and again, Q1 are the daily chores. You know, taking care of family. Uh, I have a son, and and all of that is definitely important. I do get to them, and I've, I've tried to uh, deprioritize three as much as possible, and taking away uh, four as much as I can. Finally, we are at the time planning part. And so now that we have the strategy, we need to figure out what time of day we are our most productive self. So if you find yourself that, you know, the creative ideas or you're able to, um, you know, solve the problems, your math problems best at night, then you're a night owl. Or if you find yourself that you just cannot sleep beyond, you know, 7 a.m. in the morning, you have to wake up and, and get your coffee and, and do something, then you're a morning person. And this, once you figure that out about your yourself then the next step is so that you start organizing most of your key q2 tasks around your most productive time of day for instance i am most productive after dinner after my my toddler son has gone to sleep so between 9 30 p.m to midnight or very early before my son has even woken up and um, you know I, that, that's how i plan around that block of time the second thing you can do is plan most of your quadrant two tasks at the most productive time of day. So for me, it's research writing or even creating content like this or planning what I'm going to do be, you know, doing the, the next day. All of this I generally do either at the night block or in, in my morning block. Finally, you, you prioritize Q1 and Q3. So for, in, in order for your next productive time of day. So it's not the only you, you need to find your, your best productive time of day, but also the next or the second best, because this these are things you have to do anyways. And in this case, the, the because Q1 and Q3 are more time sensitive, you need to stick to a schedule. So um, ideally, in, you know, in, in, the, in the context of, of computer science, context swapping is, is, is really memory heavy. So think about it can you batch your tasks together let's say q3 or are you q1 you have to pay bills um, you have to maybe collect your your groceries and uh, maybe again you have to you know take your dog for a walk so all these things if they, they are really important they are, they are q1 or q3 so maybe you batch them all together and stick to a schedule that this is the time of day i'm always going to be doing them that way it will not slip up uh, from your mind for instance, I always respond to emails and take calls in the morning block. So in the, the mid morning block between nine to you know, 11, 1130 is for me to respond to emails or, or to uh, look at you know, what, what's happening uh, with other people who might need my attention or help. So that's how I plan my day in and around. And finally, in the most important thing, cut Q4 tasks as much as possible. So if you think that you're not able to you know, make the best out of the 24 hours, maybe you know, turn off uh, Instagram and Facebook for 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 a while or maybe stop you know watching TV as much or you always put a timer that you know after this time you will you're not going to be watching TV anymore and fill Q for time more with rest more with sleep with meditation or something that recharges you rather than drains you so and then that should help you become your most productive self now, if you find these interesting if you find these useful please do leave me a, a comment below so that I know uh, if, if I want if I need to explain certain parts more or even help you come up with your best time plan. See you next time!